Greetings and welcome, beloved, to our Bible study time. We thank the Lord for his presence and we are so grateful for each one of you here. I'm going to begin tonight by reading a passage of scripture. Since we're here in the book of Ephesians, and the grace of God is showcased, we're going to draw from a very familiar portion of scripture. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy. And this next phrase is, is paramount which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel of multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Our Father and strong God, we thank you for this day and for as much of it as you have shared with those here in this sanctuary with me and those who are looking in. We're grateful for you carrying us over the difficult places, providing uh, some of your resources in advance for some of our needs and being there with us when we really needed you the most. Thank you for not leaving us and tonight it is through that, that we come before you, we ask now that you would lead God and direct us as you have in the past, that you would speak to us by your spirit. Open, we pray, Holy Father, your scriptures by your spirit. Open our understanding to the degree that we are able to bear the things that have been written as of old. We thank you and we give you praise in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. I wouldn't want to go much further in this book which showcases Christ and the church without making much about the grace of God. And it's here in this passage here in Luke chapter 2 and verses 8 through 14 where the Angel said that the good news of great joy would be to all people. And then making the announcement that the babe had been born and how to identify him, that they would find him wrapped in swaddling clothes. And then all of a sudden, the heavenly host just joined the end together and began praising God for what they didn't even understand. Saying glory to God in the highest. I mean, they, they laid back, they stretched out these beings know how to pick it up and put it down when it comes to praise. They're looking over into our future reality, having not even been a thought in our Father's 
eyes or movement in our mother's matrix. But to go on to say, and on earth peace, and back in chapter 2, it spoke about in Ephesians that Jesus Christ, that he is our peace. And goodwill, which is to think well of, this is God thinking well of, and that is toward man. Here in Luke chapter 2 and verse 32. Simeon is there and he had prayed and asked God to let him live long enough to see his Savior. And in verse 32, he said of chapter 2, speaking of Christ, he said that he's going to be a light. He's that true light that, light that John spoke of, the true light. That light of every man that cometh into the world. And that he would lighteth the Gentiles. It would be a disclosure of who he is. It would be a manifestation, a revelation to those who were without. But it would be for the glory of God's people, Israel. And then shortly after that, he had been circumcised. He said that in the child grew. This is Christ in as a as an infant, as a child. He's growing. And then he became strong in spirit, filled with wisdom. And the grace of God, note this, was upon him. The grace of God. was made flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld his glory the glory of the only begotten of the father full full the grace of God was upon him as a, as a child but now he's the, the fullness of the grace of God is upon Jesus Christ and if I may just take you back beloved to that field that pastor. What the angels did and that heavenly host not understanding how their maker could be made small. If someone has said a, a little baby thing that you can carry for a period of time. There's so much room between heaven for the church to praise God. For his grace. I guess they wonder why we're not as excited as they were when they saw their creator as a baby in a manger. And of his fullness we have received grace for grace. Someone said it's grace on top of grace. The law was given by Moses. But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. The question, what, what is grace? For those of you who came down for my wife's sister's homegoing celebration, the acronym was 
there on the on, on the left or the right side. God's something like the only help man if y'all want to it's it was an acronym and it, it, it spelled out the word grace God's resources at Christ's expense something something like that some say it is God's favor Someone else has said it's it's God's divine influence upon the heart that is reflected into the life. I believe it's spelled out in scripture is being God's good pleasure according to his own will. It will be God love at work for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. In Ephesians it, it talks about the, the riches of the grace of God but it doesn't leave out the person of Christ. Therefore, I believe that you can look at it this way and not to leave out anything else is that the grace of God speaks of the person of Christ, the purpose of Christ in his church and what he's doing in the world. To reach the lost, to provide what is necessary for, for the saints. I don't think the Apostle Paul was ever right after his conversion. You see, that don't make a lot of sense. Well, it doesn't. It came out that way. I don't think he was ever right to know the depth of the grace of God. How real it was to his life. For by grace are you saved through faith and Himself. He is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You've heard me say this that God's love cost him dearly in his son. So, with whatever definition you may have for, for what grace is, I think if there was something we could learn from that multitude when Christ was born that helped set up the new birth in our lives, that we can praise him because of God's goodwill. And I've been working with that word for a little while now. It, it speaks of what God would delight in what he would desire it means to think well of and the only way God could do that he'd have to go within himself and the person of Christ would be showcased before him when he came into this world to take all our sins upon him to the truth and not only carry our sins to the tree, but work out some things that we've been covering in this particular book of the Holy Scriptures. Where Jew and Gentile become one in him. I'm hoping as we move now toward our text that you revisit the grace of God as often as you can to, 
to look at it from every possible vantage point known to humanity and see how God lavished upon us a dying love that had to be in one who had all life in himself. I'm thinking that'll help us to get past the difficult places in our lives. As we look yonder to the future for that day, when we'll either go the way of all the earth, or he'll come back and receive the church unto himself. Paul wasn't right after he was saved. And then this comes out here in our text, and we, we broke off last time here in chapter 3 and, and verse 7, whereof I was made a minister. We looked at that. The Lord Jesus made him a minister. According to the, the gift of the grace of God, given unto me by the effectual working of his power. And, and that's why I believe that the grace of God is, is God working in what he's lavished on his children. And only someone is in view here is his children, the church, the sons of God. Those who are in Christ Jesus. If you turn over to chapter 4 and look at verse 7, it says, But unto every one of us is given grace according to the measure of the gift of Christ. If it's possible for anyone to just think about grace without Christ, that's some kind of sloppy agape love that they may think that God has. No, it is not divorced from Christ. It is not apart from Christ. The grace of God, us would, that are in Christ, has everything to do with Christ's person, his purpose, in his body and in God's house. But the end of all things is at hand. Be ye therefore sober and watch unto prayer. And above all things, have fervent charity. Have fervent love. Not, not love that's just love. Fervent, hot love. Among yourselves. He said, well, Pastor, there are some barriers. Deal with them. There are some attitudes. Deal with them. There are some personality. Deal with them. Because the Spirit of God is saying within the church, we ought to have hot love one for another. Not sinful, selfish, devilish, hellish love, but the kind of love that you sense. Things you learn growing up. Wife and I were talking about this the other day. With the animals. If you grew up in the country, chances are you you had a dog or two. We had one, two. We had three lassies. One was a German shepherd and the other were collies. And the, other, the last one didn't live very long. Even a dog know when you love him. They, they, they know that. Let 
if you brush them off hastily or you say something rashly, if you kick them, game over. But God wants us to have this hot, burning love. Listen to what it says here. And above all, have fervent love among yourselves, for love shall cover the multitude of sins. Use hospitality one to another without grudging, as every man have received the gift, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. The grace of God for speaking, the grace of God for ministering. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracle of God. Let him speak as the utterance of God. Or don't speak at all, as they would say. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God giveth it in all things. That God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise and dominion forever and ever. That's 1 Peter chapter 4 and verses 7 through 11. You remember last time here in verse 8, Paul who said that, remember his name means small or little, and then we came here and we saw that he's less than the least of the saints, and then we went over and looked at the fact that when it comes came to the apostles, that he was the least of the apostles, but he was not inferior to any of them because he was an apostle. This is a scripture that kind of got away from me last week. Uh, so the Apostle Paul considered himself to be so insignificant. He was small or little. He was less. He was least. And then last week we said that he was last, being born last of all. But what I wanted you to see tonight is that he was last. As an apostle, the apostles collectively, we talked about it, but I wanted you to see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 9. Small, little, least, less. Late, born late, out of time. Now, last. For I think that God has set forth us apostles last as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. I think we dealt with this some last week. Is that's because of who they are rightly related to is the foundation. The foundation is on the ground. And these men would be, in their lifetime, they would be leveled to the ground. They would die gruesome deaths. Be a spectacle unto the world and to angels, to men. That's his apostles. C contrast that to us. To you. What, what are you going through for Christ? I, I'm not talking about what I'm going through because of something I failed to do. Or something I just need. What, what are you actually, when it comes to Christ, the sufferings for Christ? Having a headache is not suffering for Christ. Feeling bad, I don't feel like it. That's not suffering for Christ. It has to be something that is rightly related to the person of Christ. His purpose something within his body, something that's within the household of faith. But look at what the Apostle Paul says. We are, we are fools for Christ's sake. But you're wise. <laughs> what is he saying? Y'all going about like y'all got so much knowledge. 
But the knowledge that these apostles had was in the person of Christ and that that had been given to them for dissimulation. To give it out, not to keep it in. And for those of us who think we're wise, we hold on to it. Why? So we can say, look at us. Look at me. I'm someone. I know more than you. I can exegete all the scriptures. Can't no one do it like me? The apostle Paul and them, they, they couldn't rise up to even consider the thought of that. Because like Christ got up under the cross for our sins, these boys are going to have to get up under the grace of God as it relates to Jew and Gentile and give it out. Apostle Paul and Peter could drop in on, not us, but anyone else dealing with this matter. One of them might say, well, I thought they might feel like it. <laughs> the Lord went through so much. God gave up everything and everyone, everyone had to clear out of heaven to come to earth when it came to salvation. We are fools for Christ Jesus. What, is, what does it really mean to be a fool for Christ? You do what he says and folk will call you a what? The dentist? You're in the saving business. I've been in the saving business. Trying to save my own self from ridicule and what folk thought about me. Well, there's only one Savior. If we're going to be a fool for Christ, we have to do what he said. That's what the... That's what the holy apostles did. That's what the prophets of that day did. Their, the sum total of their lives was centered around Jesus Christ. And everyone else... I'll get to you when I can. I'll help you when I can. I'll get back to you when I'm able. Also, but God, y'all wise. Because ain't none of this stuff happening to y'all. We're weak, but, but y'all are strong. Collectively, the church appears, not necessarily in the world, but I don't want to use the word swag, but but, but we have this, this thing about us. We have an image about us. How many in the world would believe that we would die for Jesus Christ? When the mission is to live for him. How many people are convinced that we are Christians? We are Christ. We are of the way. Without any filler, without meddling, without giving you what I think and what I feel and what I want you to know. No, just the raw word of God. Paul said, we weak. But, but y'all going around that y'all strong y'all strong. You're honorable, but we're despised. Even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst and are naked and are buffeted and have no certain dwelling place. Now, that's one thing, at least up to this point. And, and I'm praying, Lord, that when I get back home, we have something on the stack of bricks and everyone wants something on the stack of bricks, no matter where you're living. But these fellows did not have that, and somehow they managed to live a life of Jesus Christ. Having more wouldn't have helped them. 
No one wants to lose anything. No one wants to have anything taken away from them. But I'll tell you one thing. Things haven't made us walk no closer to God. Appreciate his grace. I've been brought as fast a day and tears are streaming down my face. When I consider where we are in the world, earthquakes, people, Gone, they ain't coming back. They're under rubble. They, they were buried under rubble. And I know somebody's going to ask that question. Where was God? Well, which one are you talking about? The, I mean, the, the God that's, that's behind all those idols, where was he? Oh, you're talking about the, the one true and living God who sent Jesus Christ where he's always been. He's been upon his throne and he's working out his program. We've got brothers and sisters there in Turkey, I'm sure. And in Syria, I'm, I'm pretty positive. They need our prayers. Amen. And someone, perhaps when the building started coming down and the ground started to move under their feet, and I, you, you, you all, we, you know, we had a room. I guess a little rumble a few years ago. I was sitting in my truck down at the mine, and we were right down the edge of the, to the pit. I mean, that thing could have just slid off, but I, I knew something wasn't right. Someone may have, rather than called on Allah, called on the Lord Jesus. Maybe not for salvation, but maybe someone was trapped long enough and they heard what someone said and they, and they put it together and they saw the light and then they saw more light. I want more light. I want more light. No, I, I don't even want to live. Give me Jesus Christ. What out of this world saved? We don't know it. Almost 12,000 people. That number's going to rise. Amen. But, but you know something? Here in America, that can't happen. Hmm. We comfortable? You know, God, God winks at us like, I got y'all. Y'all y'all straight. Not straight. Y'all straight. Y'all got missionaries everywhere. Y'all, 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 y'all doing it like it's supposed to be doing. You no. Know. No, we're not. The church is being sodomized. Even right here, Paul. We sit here in this room. The church is being sodomized. Up here? Right here. Folk used to say something about it. Now they stop. We suffer. Having no certain dwelling place. I mean, just, just, just hold, hold. Can we just embrace that? Whatever. You, you following Christ, but you don't have no you following him, and you don't have no certain dwelling place? Who that sound like him? Mm -hmm. Him? It wasn't, oh me, oh my, I've got it worse than anyone. I feel like the Apostle Paul. I feel like a child born at a time. And, and the worst is yet in here. Look at verse 13. 12. You have no dwelling, no certain dwelling place. And labor working with our own hands. Got bunions, scars, ashy, cold, wet. Being reviled. That just had me name just run all just thrown out there. Yeah, what they did, we blessed. And you know that ain't making no whole lot of sense in the natural, but that makes all the sense in the scripture because that's what Christ taught. Man. So somebody, somebody's going to get this one day and they're going to leave that old raunchy life of mediocrity. And tell this world, I ain't going nowhere until Christ call me home, but I'm done with you.
being persecuted. Remember, persecution is designed to run you. Well, essentially, it's designed to stop you from doing what it is you're supposed to be doing. Well, when you think about the apostles, they weren't supposed to be teaching in the name of Yahshua HaMashiach. Didn't we, didn't we command you not to teach in his name anymore? Yes. You did. But who are we going to obey? God or you? Persecution is designed to stop you from doing whatever it is that someone else doesn't want you to do. And in this case, it is what Christ's mission was. Then it's designed to run you away. Get rid of you. This you won't be doing it here. We suffer it. It's really mean we, we endure it. It ain't pretty. Where are you staying tonight, Paul? I'm not sure. What you gonna eat? <laughs> I haven't eaten anything yet. I don't know what I'm going to eat. Wouldn't that just ruin your day if you found out you didn't have nothing to eat in a whole day? For Christ. That's why they were the apostles. We, we don't have to have that pressure on us. But I can tell you one thing, this life of ease, we tell the Lord, no, don't have time for that. I'll see if I can work you in. I don't feel like calling them. Matter of fact, I ain't going to call them back. I'm not going to go. I got pressing things to do. Give. Nah, I ain't giving them nothing. Why would I want to do that? Verse 12, the end of it says, we suffer it, meaning we endure it. Being defamed, slandered, we entreat. We encourage. <laughs> we being slandered, but we encourage the brethren. Amen. And even those who need to be born again. But this is the part that really got me. We are made as the filth of the world. All you're trying to do is execute the ministry that God has here from the hyphen between your born date and when you leave here. That's your life. That's your life. That little hyphen. You born in whatever it was, from that, that hyphen is your life. In my life. Filth of the world. So, so now, in some cases, the church has said, well, we, we don't want to identify with not, not that stuff. So we, we'll just, we won't make so much noise. We won't preach open air no more. We won't share the gospel with folk that we don't know. Because like Dennis, we want to Save ourselves. And this last phrase, and I think it is, and I know y'all glad it is, and and are the offspring of all things unto this day scum. There you have it. That's the apostles, and see the apostle Paul. Now, he is one of them, and that's how, that's how they were making it. That's how the Lord was taking care of them. They weren't flying in a jet. They weren't living in a mansion. They didn't have mail coming in with checks and cash apps and giving by and all these other things. They didn't have none of that. But somehow the Lord saw fit for them to eke out in existence to get the job done. And Paul was counting his time down so well until 
Oh, something wrong. This is the end of the road. You don't know why? Because the Lord didn't say I was going nowhere else. Verse 8 of Ephesians chapter 3. Unto me who am least, less than the least of all saints is this grace given. He meant that. Because I'm, I ain't nobody. That I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. To do what? To make all see that this is the church. This is to make the church. This is so that the church sees what is the fellowship of this mystery. How it relates to us. How it communicates to us. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God. Who created all things by Jesus Christ. You see, that's the part, I guess, the angels and that heavenly host, you know, if they could see the church collectively around the world, with everything that's going on in the world, they'd be saying, uh, we saw him as a baby thing. And we broke out in praise. And we didn't even necessarily know what was fully happening because this mystery was hid in God. That, that wasn't a leak. God didn't share it in a roundabout way. As to how God would go within himself. And reveal his good pleasure toward us in Christ Jesus. When I think about it, I'm not worthy of it. Period. I'm not worthy of him sending the king of kings into the world to taste death for me. To give himself a ransom for me. For what? Didn't he know I was going to act up after he regenerated me? Took my sins as far as the east is from the west. Gave me footing, not only at the cross, but in the house of God. And made me a member, uh, a member in particular. I can't navigate this no more. You could navigate it up to a point if it was your son. Your only son. And those grand rascals and, and who he'd be dying for would be the, the scum of the earth, the filth of the earth. Holding up our righteousness on Sunday. Hey, hey God, here's our righteousness. That's how nice Dr. McGee would say, I'm not, I'm not taking in dirty laundry. No righteousness is as filthy rags. Which from the beginning of the world had been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And then finally in verse 10. To the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church 
the manifold wisdom of God because they were desiring to look into those things, but the more they looked, the less they could understand it because Jesus Christ had humbled himself under the mighty hand of God. They thought it wasn't robbery. To be equal. Turn, beloved, to 1 Peter, and we're going to close up with this passage. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter. I'm saved by grace. But now I get to carry the message of grace. The grace of God. 1 Peter chapter 1, we're going to begin here in verse 3, and we're going to read through. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again, again unto a lively hope by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. That the trial of your faith being much more precious than of gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen, ye love, and whom though now ye see him not, yet believe him, ye rejoice. So remember what we said about when you see ye, why ye, it's, he's talking about this plural. And when you see you, in, the, in this in our particular translation, when you see you, it's plural. So he's talking about the church. Ye, the believers, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. And that's the idea that those shepherds, they got involved in it. Uh, they're back there in chapter 2 of Luke. Receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Of which salvation the prophets have inquired and searched diligently, who prophesied of the grace that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desire to do what? Look into. So these things that the angels were pretty concerned about. That they were amazed. Uh, it has been revealed. And it has been given to the church. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, we will never plumb the depth of your grace. But at this point in our time together in this precious book, your grace is amazing. We, we, we never would have thought of anything like this. How when Adam sinned and then died and then died and went the way of all the earth that your son could do something with sin in himself. Take it far, far away. Not only from us, but from you. And then he would die the death of all deaths. And by the power of grace,
grace divine. He'd raise him. His spirit would raise him. And he would participate in raising himself from the dead. Making an over outward show. Triumphing over all of the enemies. And them collectively being under his feet except for one. And that's death. God, I pray that we never look at grace quite the same. That we'll see your son, the Lord Jesus, in all of his splendor and all of his regalia of light. As much as he wants to hasten to come get us, and we want to hasten to be with us, there's some things here in the middle that needs to be done. Father, I'm praying for those under the sound of my voice that just want to just sell out to this world and just say, I'm done. I'm finished. I have to live here. I don't have to be of this place. I don't have to be concerned with it the way that I that I may free up some space, free up some time, free up myself from these baggly things that they've been the way that they've been since we've been here. Not like someone. I want to live like Anna said. I, I want to be holy. I'm going to be in God's house. And, and if I'm not in God's house, I'm going to be in my house. I'm going to have my feet firmly planted under my table to do what it is you called me to do. And some of us be like Simeon, that we'll hear the Spirit of God when he speaks. We won't turn him down because we've got more pressing things to do. God, forgive me for keeping in your grace not recognize true value of it, that it is your riches at Christ's expense. It is your resources. It's all of what you've done for us. And the half hasn't even been told yet. Pray for those who are here, those who are looking in. And if there's a soul that's right at the edge of leaving this world and they're not saved that this message will be used by the spirit of God that they might see themselves and not see Christ but see themselves in dire need of a savior one who's not necessarily as someone has said and I've even said it myself that he's a sufficient savior. Oh no, he's a superior savior. That they will fall upon him. Receive him. By repenting of their sins. With childlike faith. Believing in the gospel. That God sent his son. His son gave his life. And he took their sins to the tree. Goes, he died and was buried. And on the third day, his body was raised bodily. Praying, Holy Father, that you save the lost, encourage, praying the, the saint to go on because we know what the end is going to be. The end is Christ. We thank you now, Christ Jesus' name.